Hey guys, thanks again for joining me on another episode of Seward for Good. As you can see today, we're not in our normal setting. I'm actually in Melbourne and I'm with Paul Evans, the president of the Australian Institute of Waterproofing, the AIW. Paul, thanks for joining me. Yeah, pleasure. Good so to be here. Paul is a business owner of a contracting firm in Victoria, FEW, Fidland Evans Waterproofing. However, Paul's been the president of the AIW for the last three years and I thought many of you, many of you have in, uh, asked me questions before about the AIW, what it is in terms of an institution or a, or a body for the waterproofers and who better to speak to but the president himself. So Paul, how long have you been doing this for now? Yeah, well it's about nearly three years. Um, I'm in the third year of tenure. So uh, given it the best, it's a voluntary sort of set up. So it's difficult to find the time to do what we need to do. But uh, with the 16 strong committee at the moment, it's uh, certainly making a lot easier than what it has been. We were down to a core of four there in the first year when I came on board and uh, it was hard work. So the ARW historically was a Melbourne based initiative. I remember that Pretty much so. Years, years ago, yeah, and yeah. then it sort of branched out with a few chapters in different states. Yep. So now we're. But where, where are you at with it? And what is the what is Right the across Australia, basically, to, it, to as much as we can. We're, we're represented in uh, WA, um, SA that you know about yourself, and uh, we've got uh, Sydney, we're New South Wales, we've got Queensland, um, and that's it for the moment. So, but uh, we've got about just under 600 members strong throughout Australia, and. Uh, it, uh, it's certainly a nice rep representation now that we've got. Um, we're getting a lot more interest recently. We've been going around doing a lot of shows, a lot of talks, and uh, that's and, and the aim of those talks, then, Paul, what is what is it really? What's the objective of, of going around to do those shows? All right. Well, I'm using scare tactics, uh, 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 showing the waterproofing failures. Awareness. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so and that's uh, that's my main drive at the moment. Is going around to. We're tied up with the ADEB, which is Architects, Designers, Engineers and Builders. It's a, it's a group, it's a WA-based uh, company, and they set up these seminars, and they're a small group, might have 50 in a group, and that's right throughout Australia and each state. They've been fantastic. Not so much this year, but last year was really, really active. Um, I personally went to most states to talk, and so with our other committee members, uh, we're doing it as well. Uh, that was great awareness, because we're getting a great demographic of the construction industry. So you, you actually, you've got a, an audience of architects, engineers right there at your fingertips. Yep. And they're all asking the questions and it's close and personal and it, it's a really good message and uh, we found that really valuable. Really well, valuable. I was going to ask what the aim of the ALW is, but you've just got me on a question right now. Yeah. So what was the common thing that came around from that discussion with those shows? Yeah. Well, what you methodology. Getting? Methodology. Um, there was talk about materials, um, but methodology is probably the main thing. Everybody wants to know how to do it and uh, what they should be looking for. Uh, this is from a design perspective? Yes, from a design perspective. That actually drove towards us um, thinking about how we can get that message out, how we can get some training out there. Yep. Uh, we teared it up with the Master Builders Association in Victoria and we created a waterproofing course designed specifically for people who are in the industry but not necessarily waterproofers themselves. So that course is different than, say, a Certificate 3 course that an RTO would handle? Much different. It's really what you're looking at on the job. So when the supervisor for open site goes out on site and says, OK, how do I know whether this waterproof is doing the right thing or not? So we've, we've set up the course to show the key points that they need to be looking for and to, and to make sure that it's prepared correctly. Uh, they give the OK for the waterproof to then go on and do these next steps. So okay. that's, that's pretty much in a, in a nutshell what we're doing. And I suppose I should probably start with this one, but what is the aim and the objective of the ARW? I mean, who, who are you, Australian yeah. Institute of Waterproofing? Well, a bunch of people that care about the industry. That's, that's what it really stems down to. I was moaning about this and that some five, six years ago, and my wife said, Paul, stop moaning and get out and do something, do something about, about it. it. So I did. I joined up with the ARW, and before I knew it, I ended up in the chair. So. <laughs> well, the cream always comes to the top. Yeah. So yeah. in that time, but then the ARW is a group of people that care, but it's made up of who? Industry, industry professionals, waterproofers, tilers, uh, manufacturers, uh, suppliers, suppliers uh, engineers, uh, it's, it's right across the board. Um, yeah. It's a good matrix of people who are involved and, and uh, keen to be involved. And when you, when you say that, that's the committee or the members that you, you're getting? Uh, both. But the committee, the 16 strong, are across that what I just mentioned, and then we've also stems out from that for the members themselves. So, so to, to grow the ARW, I mean, are you really pitching at 
those contractors that are waterproofing, whether it be a tiler, a waterproofer, a, a anything to do or with making things watertight. Right. Really, it's it's um, it's we're not we're not we don't hold back on who wants to become. You know, we've got people from overseas, you know, um, that are just interested. Great. So they become affiliate members and so, and so on, and they just keep up with their newsletters and they want to know what's going on in Australia. Um, which is terrific. There's not many, but we might have, you know, maybe six or seven of them that are... Uh, and, and the ideal membership you're trying to drive out there? Uh, I suppose it's, it comes down, we would love the applicators all to be members so we can be their voice, and that's, and we want... And that, that, that's a really good point you say. I yeah. mean, I think, you know, this, this program, we've got followers across different areas. A lot of them are the applicators and contractors, but I actually think that a lot of them tune into Sealed for Good and look for other similar shows for the fact that they don't feel like they have got a voice to put their, their thoughts out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, how does that, ideally, how would you like to be that voice for the, for the applicator okay. in Australia? What I keep promoting all the time, I don't get a lot of feedback on it, which I'm a bit saddened about, but uh, every newsletter I go out there, I say, please, let me know what's going on. If you've got a problem, talk to us. Talk to me personally, talk to any one of the committee members. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, it doesn't matter. As long as the message gets across, and everybody says, I don't want to talk about the problems because it, it makes, they think they makes them look like they're a bad applicator or not. We all make mistakes. Yeah. I've made mistakes. And if, yeah. if you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn. Yeah. Exactly right. So that's really what it's about. So we want them to talk to us to say, OK, here's, here's what's happened. Here's how I got out of it or here's how I fixed it or here's what I should do next time. Mm -hmm. And then we share that with everybody. We don't necessarily, it's not a, a witch hunt where we're trying to, bag anybody to say, okay, you should have done this, you should have done that. It's yeah. really about education and we all learn collectively from everybody else's mistakes as well. And also, not just mistakes, but everything, come up with good innovative ideas. Yeah. Um, that's really important. We want that as well. So when it comes to a contractor that could be in some trouble, let's say he's had a, a job that he's done yep. and he's had an incident where he's been threatened with action, yep. believes he's done everything right, um, has a builder that may or may not be around but a client that's after him and that knock on the door comes, what can the IW do for the applicator? Talk to him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I get a lot of these. Um, I've got a fair history and VCAT background from another business I was yeah. involved in some years ago. So there's some legal advice you can guide them to as well? Well, uh, we try not to give advice because we don't want to get involved in that, but what we do is it's school of hard knocks. It's actually just saying, this is what uh, I've been through or one of our committee members has been through. And we share that out and we talk about it, get to our meetings and we say, this chap's got this problem. Um, anybody been through something similar to that? Someone will put up their hand. Um, and we get a bit of feedback and then we can then impart that to the person. Quite often we'll connect up that person that's asking the question directly with the committee member and they'll just have a chat on the phone about it or an email or whatever. Um, I, you know, and for, for better or for worse, if we think we're doing, they're doing the wrong thing, we'll tell them. Yeah. Say, no, look, so, sorry mate, you've done the wrong thing here. You really need to step up the, the plate here and get it sorted. You know, Maybe, but if someone is, is, is desperately needing some sort of advice in terms of what should they do next, Yeah. Um, Okay, you don't give out advice, you don't give out advice, but can you guide them on whether yes, they give the advice? Yeah, we can. Because yeah, uh, we hear, you know, the worst case scenario is when people are helpless, hmm. and guys, you know, they think they've done all the right things, but they've come unstuck unknowingly with what's happened on site. Yep. Um, yeah. Either trade before them, or the you know the builder's gone bust and done a shitty job, and it's yeah, really happens. put them in a, in, a, in a problem. And they can come to people like us, but we're manufacturers. It's always going to look like we're pushing our product. Yeah. A body like the ARW or the MBA or the HIA, the Tile Council, etc. You know, Landscapers Association are very active over here as well. We yeah. know they're looking for those sorts of bodies. Can the waterproofers be seen to come to the ARW, knowing that that's where they can sort of confidently get yeah. that support? Exactly, that's what it's about. It's not just the members actually. We get a lot of the general public <coughs> approaching okay. us and saying, "I've got this problem. A waterproof has done this. What should we do?" Um, we usually don't ask who it is <laughs> because it's trying to, trying to remain impartial. Yeah. Sometimes it slips out. Yep. Um, but we also say, no, this is what you should expect as a consumer from your waterproofer. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a way of trying to be fair okay. about the whole thing and just what people should expect and pay for.
Let's get on the topic about what you've seen in your time as president, not as a contractor. Um, what have you seen in the national market through all the other committee members, the other chapters, but where are we still not getting it right in waterproofing no. through your eyes at the moment? It's a big question. We've got time. <laughs> to, yeah. um, I suppose to try and summarise it, it's, um, it's about builders pushing for uh, completion times, you know, and that's the that's the cruncher with the, yeah. with the air speed, get it done, get it now. Uh, not caring about climatic conditions, um, and this is a big, big topic. Uh, builders says, well, uh, it stopped raining now, come and do the waterproofing, you know, and uh, we all know the problems with that. So the substrate's still wet. Yeah. And, yeah. and they don't uh, want to pay for the the, the, the miracle product or the miracle That's right, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So they might, yeah, the an extra application to combat that, no, not going to pay for that. That's your problem, you're the waterproofer. So we see this is a major problem, particularly for the smaller contractors. Um, and they get hit really bad with this financially. Mm. Um, time's money and, uh, and they turn up on site to do the job, it's not ready. And uh, that becomes a major financial problem for them. And of course, as soon as they fall into financial difficulty, and yeah. some of the, the little guys might take mm. on a fairly sizable contract, some small item like that will cause a major problem and yeah. it can send them broke overnight. Yeah, so, I'm sad that we see that. Yeah. And that's what you don't want. Yeah. So then, um, where are the things that have improved in your time as you are education. education is what it's all about. It's really about um, sharing what collectively we know, um, those who have been through the, the ringer, if you like, just impart that with the, the people who are going or <laughs> try not to let them go through it in the first place. Yeah. But if they're in, in, in amongst it, well, that's part of it. You know, we try and help them through it. So have you found that in that time of being uh, with the education side, have there been more contractors doing Certificate three, yes, a and, huge and, and that that you endorse that and, and really encourage members to we be do. I, I'm of the opinion, and our fellow committee members of the opinion that um, any education is good education. But um, what we're seeing is a lot of RTOs coming through just doing it on the bandwagon, so to speak, mm. putting out courses that really aren't cert through. Um, they're you know, coffee cup and a biscuit uh, type yeah. qualification. We're seeing a lot of that. Um, they're getting subsidised, and uh, once they put, the, they get their subsidies about it. And uh, I've got a personal experience with that, which I'm bitter about. And I put some my guys through a um, through a third three course, and really they didn't learn much. So there, are you starting to endorse RTOs that can carry? That you say, well, you know, from opinion or we are. a reputation we are. or a recommendation. We'll look at what they're delivering and say, okay, it's a fair, reasonable course. And then uh, if someone rings us and says, okay, where can we send you? We'll, we'll say, look, we're not going to recommend, but we, can, we know that these people are delivering a decent course, so mm -hmm. it, perhaps that's someone you should be looking at. Yeah. Let's talk about the standards and regulations, where they need to change, because mm -hmm. this comes up frequently. Um, where, where does the ALW sit with that? Is part of the committee and party members being a voice to hear where change should be driven and what, what we want? And mm -hmm. then... Where are we at as an ALW in terms of driving that change? Like the standard now is four eight five eight. Yeah. You know we can sit and complain, but it's outdated. Yeah. And I've been talking about this. We're seeing things like modular prefab enter the market yeah. in a big way, starting to disrupt construction in a good way. And it's not. And I know firsthand it's not keeping up with the standards. Mm -hmm. So there's designers that have actually designed methods that actually better than what we're doing on site. Yet they don't comply. Yeah. Where's the ARW is going to start to sit in terms of pushing for change in that yeah, area? Yeah, well, the awareness side of it is just the general osmosis throughout the public and the, the industry, but we're also lobbying the government. So we're, we're talking to the Victorian Building Authority here in Melbourne, mm -hmm. um, and that's what myself and David, the Secretary, David Hepworth, yeah. uh, he and I spend a lot, we've spent so much time in there, but it's, it's, it's red tape to cut through. Yeah. We get so far, and then they'll change the committee. So then we've got to start afresh. We've done this four times now, and uh, it's to a point of exhaustion, um, whereas I'm a little standoffish now, where I think we're wasting our time. Is it, is it a, and this is just a question we haven't spoken about this, but is it a way that the ALW could um, engage with some other powerful bodies like the NBA, HRA, yeah. Soul Council, to drive it as a, as, a, as a group towards what needs to be changed? Exactly. Back to the government. You're on the money. Spot yeah. on. That's exactly the way we're starting to look at it now. We're starting to look at insurance companies. Yeah, okay. So starting to drive it from that angle, from the financial aspect. 
So we're driving it backwards. We, we've got some meetings set up in the very near future. Um, some insurance um, professionals won't go into it at the moment, but yeah. uh, we want to talk to them about how we can facilitate that and get the insurance companies on our side to, to get that message back to the government to say, look, this is, this is a very real problem. Uh, it needs to be addressed and it needs to be looked at. These government, um, <coughs> sorry, not the government bodies, but are you finding there's a confident there to be a common alignment with the HR, the NBA, and the toll counts, for example? Like, have we all got the same vested interest? It's getting closer. Um, I mean, like, master builders doesn't talk to each other throughout states. We're slowly getting yeah. a little bit of interaction there um, through the waterproofing course. Um, and the HIA we don't hear a lot of. Um, there's not, not a big voice there. Uh, we, we'd love to get more you know, interaction from them. Um, but I suppose it's time of motion again as well. So, uh, you know, if, they, if anybody in HIA is watching this, please come and see us. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's, there's HIA members out there and HIA players. I've sent a few uh, discussion points with a couple that we are definitely watching and, and keen to see. But I think it's more than just the HIA. We need to get... I think you started off with the best description. It's about people that care. We've got a situation in the industry where we don't just have uh, waterproofers are, uh, and tilers are getting in trouble. Um, builders are. But more importantly, the end client, which is the asset owner, the building owner or the homeowner, and they are very helpless in many ways. We've seen the horror stories from that. Yeah. We've, we've documented on this program a couple of times. Where can we educate? I mean, you know, some of the things we see in waterproofing just would not be accepted in other trades like mm -hmm. plumbing or electrical. Mm -hmm. Yet, like you said before, the builder just says, well, hey, I need this done. It's stop raining and hurry up and do it. I'm not paying any extra dollar. If it was an electrician here dealing with piss off, you know, and I've got to comply, I've got to, put, I've got to do this properly. Yeah. Ideally, have you, have, is the ARW thought about, in the, in the perfect world, how we want this lined up? And, and how to, because the other thing is waterproof is not a respected trade or even an acknowledged trade. Mm. So, we, you know, we, we talk about architect specifications, we see it bundled into the brick layers package, the yeah. landscapers package, the tilers package. There's not a waterproofing package, or rarely we see yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, what's the ideal picture for that? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big task, but on the same token, we, yeah, we're trying to get, um, I suppose, everybody involved talking about it. So, once we're talking about it, um, we get a cohesive uh, group together. So, yeah. if you can get that cohesion, then, as you mentioned before, you've got a chap comes in, and the builder might say, "I've got to get it done." Someone who's strong will say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that today. I'll come back when it dries out. Mm -hmm. so keep it simple. Whereas Avocado B will come in and say, I'll no, do it, mate, no it. worries. Chuck him out, get him in. We've got to stop that from happening. Um, and that's about the cohesion of getting everybody like-minded. Yeah. And being strong enough to say, no, it's not right. It's not going to happen. Or we can offer these solutions. And that's uh, part of it. Yeah, in most industries, there's always the point of accountability. Mm. And so when these things end up in court, uh, the ugly mm. stories, it'll come back to the, to the bugger that's actually accepted the substrate and worked on it. But the, what we don't have in the industry is accountability. Mm. And that accountability gets passed around. If we're in a room of different people here at the moment, one would point at the manufacturer, one would point at the yeah. applicator, one would the designer, the builder. Where does it sit? you know, wholeheartedly, and where does it need to, is it sitting in the right position at the moment, or do we need to make sure that we direct accountability, right. because it needs to start somewhere yeah. and then filter down, yeah. instead of at the moment, it's just like, you know, it's a moving target, and just point it wherever you can. Well, Victoria have been lobbying for registration, that's been going on for a long time. When you say registration, yeah. explain as, as a registered trade. Yeah, okay. great. I mean, it'd be great to have apprentices and all the rest, but I don't. I think we're a long, long way off that. Yeah. But we've been pushing for registered trade. Um, uh, Queensland has got a registered trade, so at least they've got a little bit of a whipping hand there. Yep. Um, so they've got to be. Uh, if we can get that registration nationwide, I think that's a great start. And some people might be asking and watching now, why can't we do it nationally? Why does it have to be by state? It's got to go through the government. They've got to. They've got state to veto it. It doesn't. It doesn't happen if the government says yeah. it's not going to happen. That's why we've been lobbying. With the government um, to try and get that to happen, and we got we got a long way forward with it, and then it just stopped. Yeah. So the committee gets broken up, as I mentioned before. So, yeah. Uh, but if we 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 will try again, um, I think we'll give it another shot and see what happens. But I'm not quite sure how we get around it. We've been looking for some some help 
I suppose, from anybody that, uh, that might know more about it um, to talk to us. We've, we've spoken to various people that say, yes, we can help, we can help. We get so far and then it seems to stop. Yeah, if there's any lawyers out there that have yeah. major leaking problems, they're probably the best way to, to, <laughs> to make contact because they're the ones who started. That's it, yeah. That's but but yeah. Um, have, have you, has the RAW modelled themselves on another association or body and go, you know what, they've got it right, we need to try and we haven't capture that? No. It, it, Benchmark against yeah, something else. Yeah. I suppose, um, as far as an association goes, the interaction's minor as far as with other bodies where we're... And why, why is that? Oh, I think it's just time and motion really. I don't think it's standoff or anything like that. I think it's just really the fact that everybody's time poor really. Because um, it's, it's a subject that no one wants to talk about until the shit hits the fan. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's changing. I think that's really changing, you know, with, with this voice that we are going out there and doing it. Mm. Uh, we're about to get with the um, uh, ACRA um, to go up and have some talks with them. Uh, in fact, that's booked for the 25th of September. I'm going up to Queensland yep. to talk with the ACRA Association. Um, I've, you know, that's great. That's the first time we've been involved there um, from since I've been involved. Um, so I'll be going up to do that and we'll see how that rolls. I think that'll be great. Yep. And uh, get a bit of an interaction there and get some synergy happening. We've also got, um, uh, and I'm trying to think of the acronym, but it's the Building, uh, building Materials Suppliers. There's a, there's a group of body um, that we've just connected with as well. Um, and we're going to get uh, a bit of synergy going with them as well. So. Just on that matter, so at the moment with your members, well, let's just look at the committee because they're the major decision makers. Mm -hmm. Where's your percentage split up between sort of contractors versus manufacturers versus specifiers? Um, you, can you get a snapshot of that? that it's that people understand? probably, I'm thinking through, uh, contractors would probably be about less than a third, and right. the rest would be made up of um, manufacturers, um, engineers, suppliers. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a broad sort of angle they're coming from from different aspects. We've got a uh, you know, I remember his ex CSIRO. He's on. He's been with him forever. Barrett. Barrett. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, great man. Um, knows his stuff. Yeah, very knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Barry's uh, a great sort of person to come back to. And uh, but again, you know, he's uh, he's in retirement, so yeah, he's yeah. doing what he needs to do. And in between the golf days. Yeah, yeah, and you know, he gives up. He gives up a lot of his time. Actually, he's really good. But, uh, so to wrap it up from here then, if, if anyone wants to actually become a member or know more about mm. it and they're in WA or up in Queensland, mm. Northern Queensland or Tassie uh, or in a regional area of Australia, yeah. what do they do all from here? Contact our yeah. W, just as a website, they, they come on the, you know, uh, just jump on the website and have a look at it. And that website is ALW? Yeah, ALW.com.au, uh, yeah, it's simple, yeah. Um, it's, it's a .org um, site and... Um, or well, you, know, you can call me direct, you know, I'm happy to take calls directly and, okay. and send them an application form, talk to them about what's available. I mean, what we're offering basically is support. We've got a website with full of drawings. Uh, we've gone through the drawings. They still need a little bit of work, uh, but generally they're pretty good. We've to put a practical approach on those drawings, not just the straight out of the standards book, but we've said practically it needs this and practically it needs that. So we've put practical notes with all those little drawings. So for applicators and the like, or even uh, architects and engineers, they can look at those drawings and go, okay, it makes sense on how this needs to happen on this part of the job, mm -hmm. you know. And in terms of suppliers like around the country that are involved in waterproofing or even other manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, they can just do the same, get on, on the website and sure. inquire about becoming a member. Yeah, and actually really encourage our suppliers and, and contractors and everybody to uh, each month give us their stories and uh, if you've got, uh, we don't. Maybe a few of those, yeah. Yeah, there's lots. <laughs> but we don't go for product sell. It's not yeah. a product sell, but it's really about we've done a job. We used a polyurethane, or we used a torch, on, or we used something, um, and we got great success out of it. And had clients, and we like those stories, um, and we like they go into the newsletter. We like to put three or four of those in each month, mm -hmm. uh, which quarter now it is, and. Um, uh, yeah, more, more sort of information we can get back from all our members in uh, collectively and then put in the newsletter and share it. All right, guys, so look, if you want to uh, engage in this discussion any further, you heard it from <coughs> Paul Evans from the ARW, you can get on to the website, inquire about membership or just inquire about even that voice that uh, Paul discussed. And if you've got any messages or uh, chat about it to me, put it in through a DM or just engage in the conversation for us on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe 
And if you want to find out more about the ARW, get hold of this man here. He said you can call him. The president is available. Thanks very much. No worries. Cheers.